Hi there, welcome to Switch Mania. I am Clarence and today, we'll talk about the best Nintendo Switch games on sale. We will be covering the UK, EU, US, Australia, and Canada eShop. But first and foremost, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you want to see more of this series, please leave a like, remember to subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell to receive future notifications. Likes and subscriptions help keep the channel alive. First on our list is Sayonara Wild Hearts. Sayonara Wild Hearts is the type of game that teaches me new things about what games Games can do, and I can't wait for this type of design to become popular. Sayonara Wild Hearts is a package of joy, with music and visuals that will appeal to anyone. It is brief, sweet, and straightforward. Sayonara Wild Hearts is a parable about pop culture. Its designers wanted to tell a story in which each level made you feel something different. Because of its great music and art style, this game is very unique and interesting. It's primarily about rhythm and precision, but it's also a listenable music album. Next is Gone Home. I remember sitting and staring at my computer screen for a long time after finishing Gone Home for the first time years ago. I didn't want to move or speak. I just wanted to reflect on what had happened to me in a single night. The Fulbright Company knows how to tell a story, and they do an excellent job of making the player feel like a part of it. Slowly playing this game will provide you with a story that demonstrates what the medium of video games is truly capable of. Gone Home is a game that you should enjoy and remember. Next is Florence. Florence is a must-play if you want a story about the joys and challenges of love, as well as everything that goes with it, that will make you feel deeply and connect with the characters. Because of how simple it is to play, how beautiful the art is, and how powerful the music is, anyone can pick it up and feel like they're a part of Florence and Krisha's story. It's a happy story with some sad parts, but it ends with a wonderful message of hope for the future. With a playtime of 45 minutes to an hour, this is a great game to show your family to demonstrate how games can be used to creatively tell a story about becoming an adult. Next is Escatos. Escatos is a fantastic shoot em up game on its own, but when you combine it with Judgment Silver Sword, Cardinal Sins, and all of the other modes and features included in this package, you have a game that is extremely easy to recommend. If you do everything Escatos has to offer, you'll be busy for hours. Even though there was little doubt, the Switch version of the game works flawlessly. Another excellent shoot em up game for the system that even newcomers to the genre may enjoy. Escatos is already one of the best shoot em up games for the Nintendo Switch. I'm hoping that some of the issues with tape mode's performance can be resolved, as that is my main complaint about this release. Aside from that, Escatos is a fantastic experience that all genre fans should try. I'm hoping for a physical release in the near future. Next is Azure Striker Gunvolt 3. Azure Striker Gunvolt 3 successfully concludes the trilogy by raising the stakes in all the right places. It introduces new game mechanics to keep things interesting while reimagining and expanding on what first drew fans to the series. This appears to be the culmination of Inti creates many years of hard work. It's a true work of art that combines a vintage aesthetic with modern technology. If this is the final Gunvolt game, I can rest assured that the Azure Striker went out with a big blue bang. Overall, Azure Striker Gunvolt 3 was a fantastic game for me. Even though it does not provide the perfect experience for fans, it is still one of the best in recent years. It's a game with a rich story, stunning graphics and sounds, and fast-paced, action-packed battles. There are some really exciting things to look forward to if you enjoy the series. Even if you aren't, this is a platformer game that you should own if you enjoy them. Next is Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon. Beautiful pixel art, good music, well-planned levels, and multiple endings make you want to play it again and again. What is already a fantastic Castlevania game could have been improved with a few more levels and possibly more modern controls. Curse of the Moon is a fun throwback to the old Castlevania games, and it's well worth the admission price if you miss those games. If you couldn't stand the first three Castlevania games, Curse might not be for you, but I'm willing to bet there are some systems in place that you'll enjoy. Bloodstained Curse of the Moon is much more than a retro-themed minigame. It draws inspiration from the classic Castle Castlevania NES games and adds many quality of life improvements to the nostalgic 8-bit gameplay. Next is Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon 2. Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2 is an excellent sequel to the first, and I'm glad Koji Igarashi and Inti Creates decided to create it. It's a fun retro-inspired game with an interesting co-op mode and a fantastic new cast of playable characters. Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2 has many of the same positive aspects as the first game, with just enough new content to justify its existence. All of the good things about its predecessor remain, and it's even more strange and original. The classic Castlevania 3 inspired recipe still works, and genre fans will appreciate the retro stiff but tight and satisfying controls. Again, Inti Creates did an excellent job. 
Next is Azure Striker Gunvolt Striker Pack. The Azure Striker Gunvolt Striker Pack contains the pinnacle of what IntiCreates has created thus far. By far the more interesting of the two is the sequel. It has a lot more content and is much more visually appealing. The action is extremely addictive, and the game is tight and simple to learn. It's difficult to stop playing the game because it's so entertaining. They're both excellent examples of the run-and-gun genre, so it's difficult to find major flaws in either. The fact that they are available for the Nintendo Switch simply means that you do not have to play them at home. Next is Gunvolt Chronicles Luminous Avenger IX. Gunvolt Chronicles Luminous Avenger IX is an excellent 2D action game. It's a great example of how 2D action should be done, from the way it looks to how fast it moves. Gunvolt Chronicles Luminous Avenger IX was fantastic. Despite its short length, the game is the best in the series due to changes in gameplay. It's clear that the developers prioritized speed and getting to the fun stuff as soon as possible. As a result, the game flows well and makes you want to go back and improve in some stages. The way the levels are designed and the game is played results in an intense 8.5 hours. Next is Blaster Master 02. Blaster Master 02 is a vast improvement over the original. Everything here is superior to it, to the point where it is no longer required. The plot thickens, and there are actual cutscenes with beautiful pixel art in the style of the NES. There is a cast of friendly, strange aliens who talk funny to their sidekicks and drive their own vehicles. Even those who complete the game can receive a different ending. Some may be disappointed that this is a level-based game rather than the original, but Inti Creates made a much more exciting game by focusing on the strength of the mechanics and the flow of the action. Blaster Master 02 is one of the better 2D action games available for the Nintendo switch. Next is Blaster Master 03. Blaster Master 03 concludes the modern take on the Blaster Master story, and it does everything necessary to provide you with a high-octane, satisfying retro platforming experience. The Dark World mechanic adds a nice extra layer to the overall design, and the game's familiar parts are as polished as ever. Indie Creates could have stopped with the first Blaster Master 0 and been satisfied, but the third game in the series is nothing short of fantastic. If you get the chance, add this one to your library. However, before you do so, you should play the two previous entries. These games are truly amazing. Next is Buried Stars. Buried Stars appeared out of nowhere, but it has quickly become one of my favorite visual novels. The title's excellent visuals and compelling stories set them apart from others in the genre. The localization can be a little flat at times, but any adventure fan should give this a shot. I enjoyed Buried Stars, but I was frequently overwhelmed by how detailed and complex the mechanics were. The presentation was by far my favorite part of the experience, but it wasn't overly important to the overall experience, which was nice. I haven't played any of this developer's other games, but Buried Stars left an impression on me, so I'll keep an eye out for their new releases. I hope they continue to push to get their games distributed around the world. Even though Buried Stars' localization was not perfect, I believe this kind of push aided the game. If you enjoy mystery visual novels and don't mind the issues I mentioned, you should give this game a try. Next is Cupid Parasite. I haven't played a visual novel in a long time that makes me as happy as this one. It's difficult to do comedy right, especially when there's a subversive element involved, but Cupid Parasite never disappoints. It tells a great story and backs it up with great style and verve in between the funny parts. This is one of Otomate's best works. Cupid Parasite is one of the most unique Otome games I've ever encountered. From the second game to the fourth, I was on the edge of my seat, waiting to see what would happen next. Its amusing romance kept me awake until the early hours of the morning, and I haven't felt this strongly about a game in a long time. Aside from the broken roots, the translation work is good, and I'm looking forward to the developer fixing the current bugs. Next is Dreamscaper. Dreamscaper is a heartfelt and engaging roguelike. Because it has a gameplay loop that is meant to drive a deeper story, the game may be one of the few examples of synergy in the genre. Dreamscaper frequently punches above its weight thanks to its clever upgrade system and heavy, acrobatic combat. This one is for those who get lost in games with endless loops. Dreamscaper is a game with numerous parts that do not all fit together. It combines Hades and Persona 5's great gameplay loops, but it puts them in a slice-of-life package that doesn't quite fit them. Dreamscaper is a great roguelike that fans of the genre should check out, even if the characters and story aren't very good. Next is Rift Tracks, the game. Fans of Rift Tracks and Mystery Science Theater 3000 will enjoy Rift Tracks, the game. It should also be in the library of anyone who enjoys games that make people laugh out loud, such as What the Dub and Quiplash. Even if the titles don't make you laugh, the price is hard to beat when you consider how many people can play for hours. Rift Tracks the game is ideal for those who can't stop laughing while watching a bad movie. Rift Tracks the game is essentially a re-release of What the Dub? Because it features the voices of the Rift Tracks crew, 
it works well as a creative and funny party game. A few changes to how the game is played make the dialogue riffing more enjoyable, but adding more movie clips and making the rounds different would extend the enjoyment. Next is What the Dub. What the Dub is a fun party game that allows everyone to show off their sense of humor. It's obvious where the game's ideas came from, but that doesn't matter because there's plenty of room for games with fresh perspectives. Even though there isn't much variety, the low price compensates. What the Dub is a fun game to play with your friends even when playing online. What the Dub is a great little party game in the style of the Jackbox games, and it will be played a lot at my house because I like it so much. Next is Pocky and Rocky Reshrine. Tango Project has saved the best for last with this third remake of an old 16-bit Natsum game. Rocky and Pocky Reshrined expands, improves, and improves almost every aspect of the original Pocky and Rocky, which was already a fantastic run-and-gun experience. With its beautiful graphics, deep gameplay, and a cast of interesting characters, Reshrine outperforms its predecessor. It also introduces a new generation of players to a core game that is just as enjoyable to play today as it was 30 years ago. Pocky and Rocky Reshrine Shrined is an excellent Nintendo Switch run-and-gun shooter. It is one of the best Nintendo Switch games this year. It's entertaining to play and looks great on the Nintendo Switch's OLED screen, but I'm disappointed that co-op isn't available right away. Next is Rainbow Billy, The Curse of the Leviathan. Rainbow Billy, The Curse of the Leviathan is a game with a profound message. It combines classic adventure gameplay with a novel combat system. It was a very good and moving experience because it was made with care. Rainbow Billy is like the offspring of Wind Waker, Paper Mario, and Mr. Rogers. It's sweet, makes you feel good, is difficult to stop listening to, and is lovely. Not only that, but it addresses difficult topics in a mature and thought-provoking manner. These topics truly encompass the entirety of what it means to be human. They include low self-esteem, anxiety, fear, anger, strength, and masculinity, among other things. The truth is that both children and adults can enjoy this game because everyone can benefit from it. Next is Olympia Soiree. Olympia Soiree's parts all fit together perfectly, just like the colors of a rainbow do naturally. Olympia Soiree takes pride in being both a comfortingly traditional and a refreshingly modern odor me, just as we all have different roles, some of which are given to us by family or tradition and some of which we choose for ourselves. The game's overall story benefits from the welcome mix of soulmate searching and trying to make the world a better place. Just as looking for love does not have to obstruct your other goals in life, focusing on romance does not have to obstruct a good story. Olympia Soiree is the best example of why a game's focus on romance or being a game for women should never be used to dismiss it. Next is Undernaught's Labyrinth of Yomi. Undernaught's dungeon crawling is enjoyable, but it's the story that will entice crawler fans and those who have never played one before. Undernaught's Labyrinth of Yomi is one of Experience's best games, and it deserves to be recognized outside of the DRPG genre. Its commentary on capitalism is thoughtful, pointed, and purposefully blunt, and it takes place in one of the most unique and interesting video game settings. When we think of Halloween and all the scary games that go with it, we don't often think of dungeon crawlers. After all, the crawler doesn't have any violent action or jump scares. There are far too many twists and turns for that. But horror can be much more than jump scares and violent action, as Undernauts demonstrates. Strong atmosphere, challenging combat, and experience incorporate its mastery of the genre combined to create something nearly impossible to put down. Next is Alien Isolation. Alien Isolation is a heartfelt game that works flawlessly on the Nintendo Switch. The game exemplifies what third-party developers and studios that port games are capable of. If you haven't already, now is the time to play Alien Isolation. If you've been waiting for it to come out on Switch, you should definitely get it if you want to be terrified by a game with excellent graphics and thrilling moments. Alien Isolation is a near-perfect work of survival horror. It is difficult to play, but it exudes style and class. It looks and feels exactly like the original 1979 film and is still a lot of fun. Thanks to some magic, the game works just as well, if not better, on Switch. It is one of the platform's best ports to date. Next is Abzu. Abzu is an excellent game for those who enjoy casual adventures such as going for a walk in the woods. The dreamlike graphics, hypnotic orchestral score, and purposefully slow pace immerse the player in this alien world. Abzu is an excellent game for Switch owners looking for something a little less intense. It's not about winning, but about the journey you take to get there. Abzu is a brief but intensely beautiful experience. Its message can be interpreted in a variety of ways, and it says a lot without saying a single word. Although Journey was clearly influenced by other songs, the title retains its own unique style. Next is Demon Turf, Neon Splash. Neon Splash is an excellent follow-up to Demon Turf, a highly stylized 3D platformer. It builds on the best elements of the first game. By removing the annoying combat, 
it becomes a pure platforming game that is short but great. Overall, Demon Turf Neon Splash is a far superior game to its predecessor. This is because the game's tedious combat has been removed entirely. Not only that, but the experience feels more focused and streamlined without a hub world or required collectibles. This is Demon Turf at its finest, and I hope that a true sequel will provide us with more of the same in the future. Next is Horus. Horus is a very special game, and the only thing I can say is that there are already so many amazing independent games on Switch that I fear Horus will get lost in the crowd. If you enjoy great level design, great storytelling, great art, evocative music, great characters, funny situations, and emotional gut punches, Horus is a no-brainer. It's moving without being manipulative, intelligent without being arrogant, and nostalgic without being a sloppy rehash. So, yes, Horus is another indie masterpiece that every gamer who appreciates high-quality experiences should play. It's a masterpiece that owes a lot to its medium but is strong, creative, and one-of-a-kind enough to stand on its own as something very special. Definitely a must-buy. Next is Two Point Hospital Jumbo Edition. Two Point Hospital Jumbo Edition is essentially the same hospital management game that I played. The only differences are that it now includes two additional DLC packs and two additional item packs. I can only recommend it to those who haven't already purchased the first version. The core game, Two Point Hospital Jumbo Edition, is a good place to start. The extra content packs add a lot to the main game, but they don't make it too difficult for newcomers to Two Point Hospital. Even if the controls on other platforms are a little awkward, the game is still good and worth getting. Next is The Last Friend. To be honest, The Last Friend is more like every last friend. So many dogs need to be saved, and each one is as adorable as the last. Every new friend is a new team member who can be used to take out multiple tough enemies at once. It's just so much fun to see how happy the dogs are when they're rescued and how many people you can get out on the street to help you fight. It's just a fun game especially for dog lovers looking for a new reason to battle through difficult waves of enemies in order to save the world. Overall, every dog lover at the Stonebot just demonstrated how wonderful man's best friend truly is. Almost every aspect of this game demonstrates love and care, which will stick with me for a long time. And last, but not the least, Boomerang X. Boomerang X is a 3D action game with a diamond-like shine. Despite the lack of beautiful cutscenes or clever lines of dialogue, the game's action never ceases to amaze. The lightning-fast action complements the stellar Boomerang's operation perfectly. For fans of the genre, Boomerang X is a lot of fun from start to finish. Boomerang X is an excellent example of something brief and to the point. It's a small game with a hazy, enigmatic story, dynamic combat, tough enemies, and a lot of satisfaction when you win the final wave. Boomerang X is one of the most enjoyable independent games I've ever played. I had to put my abilities to the test while dealing with some sluggishness. That's all guys. I hope this video was helpful in deciding which game to play, and thank you for checking out the list. Please remember to subscribe and we'll see you at the next one.